Hey everybody, just coming to you with a new tutorial. So many people ask me how I do some of the things that I do, so now I'm going to try my best <laughs> to explain what all, what steps that are involved in actually creating some of my designs. Um, I don't know if you can see this little cow. I bought this um, stencil from Timu, which is um, a rather inexpensive place to get your stencils, any kind of craft supplies. So if you haven't bought from them before, try it out. I just now started. Um, the first thing I want to tell you is that when you get a new stencil, no matter where you got it from, you need to test it out on something other before you start testing it out on the product that you want to put it on. Um, I plan on putting these on tea towels because they're cute. <laughs> I did pre-wash all my tea towels that I'm using today and just let them air dry. You are supposed to wash your fabrics um, that you're going to paint on and do not use any fabric softener or anything else. Um, that's why I didn't put them through the dryer because the dryer makes the tea towels wrinkle even more than what they normally would. So um, I am using a stencil brush um, it is a, a brush that I bought at Walmart. It is nothing special, but, and that's also why I wanted, to, you can create some very, very adorable items and don't have to spend a lot of money to get the items that you're looking for. So, um, since I'm not doing this on fabric, I will not be using my fabric medium, which I do have, and I will show it to you. This is fabric medium by deco art i ordered this through amazon but i believe you can get this at walmart also i believe that i paid 349 a bottle for this and it is a two ounce bottle you use according to the directions um, a two to one paint to medium ratio and i will be doing that when i'm mixing my paints for my tea towels but since i'm just trying this out on guess what and an empty box that I'm going to toss. I'm just going to use any paint color. I want it to stand out and I've been trying to figure out what color this Admiral Blue, um, which is an apple barrel paint that I got at Walmart. I'm actually going to see if I can, what color it produces. So I'm going to try that first. Um, I suggest you pour a little bit into a little bowl as I'm doing right here. Do not need a lot of paint, but since I am going to be mixing this with the medium here in just a minute, I'm going to show you um, how I do that. I always keep paper towels next to me because when you load up your brush with paint, you also then need to unload it onto a surface other then your stencil before you start stenciling and that way you can remove the paint. It doesn't run underneath your stencil. So let's get started. So first I'm just gonna damp, damp my brush and I hit it a little heavy. I don't know if you can see that or not, but uh, what I'm also then gonna do is turn around on my paper towel and get rid of all that paint before I start damping. And you need to use a circular motion going around into your into your stencil until you get the coverage that you're looking for. Isn't that cute? This is going to turn out being cuter than what I thought it was going to, but do your very best to hold down as hard as you can on your stencil because you do not want it to move while you're doing this. I am doing everything in blue. You certainly could use any other color all the way around. If you want your if you want your cow to be black and white, you can use your tea towel as the white portions of it and then use black as your trim here and then take another color do your flower in the farm life just to give it a little bit of personality for yourself and how you would want everything decorated. Let's see how this is turning out. I 
Did you see I set over my, instead of moving my hand, I thought I could do it, but I lifted my stencil. We'll see if it made any underneath there. You can also pick to choose not to put um, parts of your stencil in it. If I decided I didn't want the farm life portion of the words in there, I could actually just go ahead and cover that up with tape. Um, you can use like a painter's tape to cover that up. Yeah. But I thought I would try it since this is the first time using this. I wanted to, oh, did you see I just moved it again? Try your best to line it back up. Um, when I, um, as I said, when I started, or when you get a new stencil, you definitely want to try it out, see what you like, what you don't like part of the stencil, and then go from there. Not crazy about how close it is to the edge. I don't know if you can see this or not, but I did get some paint on the actual cardboard. So what that tells me is that when I go to do my towel, because I don't want paint to get off the edges, I should take tape around this and that will keep me from doing that. So that's why you should always try your stencil on something before you actually put it on the tea towel. Isn't that cute? I really like it. All right. I will come back to you here in just a little bit. I need to set up, mix some paint up for my towel and um, try it on the towel and I'll let you come back then. Okay. So I thought I'd show on camera how I'm actually going to mix this paint. Um, according to the instructions on the um, Deco Art Fabric Paint Medium Jar, it reads like this. Create a washable permanent paint for fabric by using this medium with any acrylic. As you can see, I was using acrylic Admiral Blue uh, Apple Barrel Paint from Walmart. So this is supposed to make it permanent. It says pre-wash your fabric without a softener. Mix two to one paint to medium. Apply with a brush or a sponge onto your fabric. Heat set 30 seconds with an iron water-based permanent. For additional product information, you can go to the website. I will not be showing you how to heat set this on camera. Um, I normally use my Cricut, um, my Cricut heat press to permanently set this when I'm done. Um, I will show that in another video. I don't think that it needs to increase the length on this video. But what I did, here's the amount of paint that I have left over from when I did my, my farm life box here, as I was telling you. Um, I don't know if you can see the whole thing or not. I'll have to see that in just a minute. But um, what I'm going to do is add probably about the same amount or dollop that I did before. It looks kind of like that. And then since I need already had some in here. I'm going to dollop some of this paint medium in there and then I'm going to ah, see what happens. <laughs> We're going to add more paint to this. <laughs> so a two to one ratio of paint medium, paint to medium, and I'm just going to stir this up with a wooden stick. looks like that's going to lighten my paint quite a bit so I'm probably going to add another paint um, my um, since I'm just trying this now that I know that that medium is so runny I will just put more paint for 67 cents as I believe is what the apple gloss or the apple barrel paint is at Walmart I would rather use up more paint than more medium and you know waste this medium and that does help Takes it more to the admirable color that I was looking for. I'm gonna get this drip off. I'm placed this um, cardboard box here. And the reason why I've done this is not only our tea towel, or the reason why these 
tea towels are super thin and the paint is going to go right through them. And I don't really want my table to have remnants of this blue paint on it for my next project. So I don't know if you can see that or not. It looks like it's pretty um, incorporated. So we will go from there. After mixing it with my little stir stick, I have noticed that the color, now that I've got it mixed up in the proper, um, proper two to one ratio, that my color is back. Where when I had it before and the mistake that I had made and just let it dump in, um, <laughs> I had lost a lot of my blue color and I wanted it that blue for a reason. I really enjoy this color blue. It reminds me of the china that my mom had when we were growing up. So with that said, I also have other stuff. That now that this is mixed, I'll show you some other stuff. Ended up purchasing um, the stencil from Timu, which I showed you. Um, again, this is the cow that we just did. Right, let's see if you can see that or not. Oh, you can't see that. There we go. Um, isn't it cute? Okay. So, in this stencil collection, I paid $4.48, but I got eight stencils. If you go onto Timu, the um, description says eight sheets of country farm theme templates or happy farm hollow spray templates. So I think if you did both of those searches, you could come up and find this stencil that I just purchased. Of the eight of these stencils, we had the cow, which I just did. We have one that says home sweet home which is really cute and I might do this on a towel too because I think that would go in any kitchen. Here's one with everybody's favorite little truck and the flowers. It says fresh cut flowers, tulips, roses, and daisies. This would also make a really cute um, towel. Um, this next one's really cute. It's probably the cutest one I think. It's the goat with a flower in his mouth and that's really cute. There's also a bigger stencil that says farmhouse and has a chicken with an arrow on it. And this also would go with that farmhouse theme. Um, there is, this is us, our life, our story, our home. It came with this stencil being of a sunflower but you could do this with anything and you could do the center being the dark brown and maybe the outside being the white or yellow and then this cute pig isn't that cute and he also has farm life on him again all of these stencils cost me four dollars and 48 cents um i didn't have to pay uh shipping with timu because i had actually um purchased enough that i was over that 50 dollars mark so i also didn't have to pay shipping so um, that's just a little bit of things we might be doing today. Again, I'll be practicing on the other um, stencils so you can see. Um, and I might post those pictures later on my on my website to see so you can see what they look like once they're done. But today we're focusing on the cow. Um, I noticed this first when I had said earlier that I washed and hand you know I didn't hand wash them but I hand dried them. There's a brown spot right here but we're going to use this one I'm, I'm going to use this towel right now and i am actually what how many tea towels do you walk into that didn't have a stain on it in anybody's kitchen mine definitely have stains i cook i also wipe my hands a lot with that said <laughs> i use the decorative towels and i'm probably not supposed to but with that said we're going to try this out i'm going to try the medium out on this one we're going to heat set this one and if it doesn't work then I haven't ruined the rest of my towels that I have ready. Um, I am doing this over top of a cardboard box and the reason why is the fabric for tea towels are very thin. Therefore, um, it's going to go through and I really don't want this on my table to 
you know, so everybody sees exactly, <laughs> um, exactly on the table. I don't want it to get on my other projects either. So the first thing I'm doing is I folded this towel in half. Um, I know from corner to corner, side to side, I just want this cow to be on one end of it because the other half will be hanging over the bar of my oven. So the first thing I do is I'm just kind of um, what I would call finger pressing the center. And I know you can see, I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but it's very, very prominent on um, the tower right here. It's going right down the middle. I'm going to take my um, stencil and I'm going to turn it a little. I'm not going to squeeze because I don't want it to personally, I don't want it to permanently um, crease my my um, my stencil. But I'm going to get a roundabout. And it is. The center is a roundabout right here at this corner of the neck of the cow. So I'm going to lay this down. And remember when I did my box... Um, I'm not real sure if you saw this box that I did. See around the edges where I went uh, too far out. But again, this is why I tell you to try it on something that is either going to be tossed. I mean, this is awful cute, but I'm, I'm not going to keep this box. Um, but with that said, I need to tape around the edges so I don't get my paint outside the edges of the towel. So I bought myself, brought in my painter's tape that I have. I just have blue painter's tape. We're gonna line the edges of this. Um, I am probably going to do um, two um, strips of paint, I mean, yeah, tape around. I'm gonna try my best make sure that that is straight. I'm also going to press down. This will hold your towel. It hold it to the towel too so maybe I won't have so much problems as I did earlier. I don't know if you watched the earlier part of this but I just want to make sure that I'm not getting any on the towel. So I just need to be at least and I believe this is a one inch painter's tape um, away from the actual stencil itself. So I'm going to do around all four sides. It will also help hold it down for me. You do not definitely, I mean, you saw me do the other stencil on the cardboard box. You do not have to do this. This is not a requirement. But it, it will be a nice, a nice uh, option for me to not have to sit and press it as hard as what I was doing. And I can actually concentrate on actually painting what I was painting. Um, that makes sense. So... That should keep my mess up off the towel. <laughs> Cross your fingers. We still might end up with paint on the towel, but <laughs> we're going to try my best not to do that. All right. I'm also, I don't know if you guys saw this, but each of those stencils that, that I bought, all of them in one, have a hole in the top right-hand corner. Um, and that's, it comes with a ring. I don't know where the ring is. Here it is. It comes with a ring when you buy it from Timu. Um, it, the ring comes included. And that way you can hold all your rings together or all your stencils together with the one ring. You can also hang it on the wall. I've seen some people hang them with um, hangers in their, in their closets and stuff or craft room or however they want to do it. I haven't decided how I'm going to hang them up, but I know if you hang them, it'll keep them as straight as possible. So... All right, but what I was noticing is my tape, when I went over that edge, did not cover that little hole. So I'm gonna add that little bit of tape right there. And just around the actual edge of where I have my tape on my, I am going to notice that, press as hard as I can, because I don't want it to the paint to go up under the tape either. Okay, here we go. I'm going to get rid of this trash. Here again is the same brush that I used when I was doing it on um, the cardboard box. We're going to, it is still wet, but I did get as much of the um, paint off of it as I could. <clears throat> that blue stains really bad on the there. But with that said, the reason why I did that is um, I didn't want it to 
affect the mixture of paint and medium that I had mixed up here. So let's try this out. I'm gonna load my brush, rub it off, and start. I am still holding down, I don't want it to move, and I know that this is on cloth, so it will move. <laughs> I'm going to hold it down as best I can and see what we've got. You always go in a circular motion when you're doing a stencil. It helps. Now, I say that it helps. It does help, gets in all the nooks and crannies without tr going up underneath your stencil. See how my stencil right here is raising? That's why I know I will need to push down when I come next to it because I don't want it to completely take the design away from the stencil. So I'm still applying pressure even though I know it's not gonna move. It's taped to my, to my cloth. But I also want it to have a clear um, actual imprint of the stencil itself. And that's also, see how I actually went on to the tape. That's okay now that I taped it. Remember when I said it's try out and, and do all of your stencils that, you, that are new because you don't know, just like I didn't, know that I would get around the edge and wasn't paying any attention because I was filming. Don't want that to happen because you're going to ruin your project. You can't get this stuff off once it's set. I kind of like that um, too. I don't know. Here, I'll show it to you. See how this edge here is lighter? And down here it's darker and the F is lighter. I like that in my project. So some of it, I'm not getting as all of the paint in in every spot, but I'm trying to at least get it to where it is a consistency. Of the stencil itself. See how that's lighter? I know that's going to be lighter than the rest of it and I'm not going to go back over it because it looks good. But I am going to take a paper towel. I don't know if you can see this. See how it's bubbling up over the stencil? I wanted to put my finger there but I don't want to, you know. There we go. I'm paint his nose here. I was doing that. I don't want to be able to pick my finger up and then put the blue paint somewhere else on the actual the actual towel itself. See how I got paint on my finger? <sighs> Sorry if you're getting dizzy. <laughs> Just realized my camera was moving with my table. <laughs> All right. So cute. I'm excited about seeing this. This will be a total reveal for us. And then I will probably heat set this here in a little bit. It says I have always, I mean, if everything that I've done, I've always let it air dry before I heat set. Um, so I probably will do that. That's why I said I will not be showing you. I do have a Cricut press that I will be using and I can set the temperature on that and get it to the exact temperature that I want. It doesn't have a recommendation and I'm sure that I'm going to actually have to go on to the website to actually see that. But let's see what this looks like. It's going to be cute. Cross your fingers, people. Look at that. It is cute. I'm so glad I did it on this one first because look where it ran. Right up there by the farm. Look at that. It ran by the flower too. So, I don't know if you can see that or not. Up there on the top, it ran by the farm. Life. I mean, the life looks good, but the farm doesn't and neither does the flower. So that tells me that I have too much medium in there because it went really well. And look, this is why I didn't put it on my table. I don't know if you can see that. And why I actually put the, the cardboard down because I knew it would go through the table itself. All right, 
<laughs> see if I can get another one to work out. And what I'm probably going to do, because this is the towel that I had um, that had the spot on it, the brown spot, is I'm just going to pick another spot and we're going to try it again. And I've got to get the right consistency of the paint so this doesn't happen again. So we'll see. I'll try again here in just a second. Okay, we're going to try this again. So I found a couple drops of water that were in my paint little tub that I had here from when I cleaned it out um, from the first cardboard incident. Don't know if that's what caused it to run on this one. I'm pretty sure it is. So we are going to <laughs> make sure my camera is still set and where it's supposed to. We're going to try this again. And I'm going to start from the actual mixing because everybody who has tried this says that this is the best medium to make your acrylic paint stick and be permanent to fabric. So that said, we're going to work in drops, not squeezes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. That's how much medium is in there. I think I'm going to go probably to 15 or 20. Um, there's 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 drops, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Now, that's it. Don't really know that you need to know that I can count to 30. <laughs> or 40. <laughs> but, oh, so I'm going to turn you off. I'm putting 20 drops of the blue paint in here to be a 2 to 1 ratio to see if I can get... Um, a better consistency and it not to be so runny. So I'll be right back. Okay, here we go again. I have mixed the paint. This time there's absolutely no water in it. And I'm actually going to clear my brush out a little bit more because I also had um, cleaned my brush in between the time that I did the cardboard one. And I think that that's what actually caused the. Um, the um, running of the farm. I am also think I'm going to start here at the cow. So once I load my brush with the paint, I'm going to start in the middle and go out. And then maybe by the time I get to the farm life, there won't be as much paint in my brush to smear the way that it did. So let's try it. What's the worst thing that I could do is screw it up some more, right? <laughs> All right, let's see here. Again, I'm pressing on the actual stencil so it doesn't raise up. I'm going in a circular motion. See, that already looks better. So let's see if this is right. Um, on the ratio I did, of course, I, you saw the video, I did 20 drops of the, of the actual uh, medium. And then I came back through and I, I did... Um, 35 drops of the paint. The reason why I did 35 drops instead of 40 is because the drops of paint has more consistency in the drop than what the paint than the paint medium did. So I'm hoping that this is it. And we will see. It looks like it's drier, so that is a good thing, right? Um, I'm 
notice some of the um the actual portions here the in between the lips which i would have been okay with the lip um here on this cow being a little bit runny but this is not acceptable to sell um, and then on the flower had a little bit nobody would have actually noticed that so i would have sold that also the way it was but we're gonna see if this um if the farm life actually continues to smear the way it did i may just tape over it and not use the words on that one i have the one the big farm life that could have gone across i think it was the farm it may have been um I don't know if it said farm life or not. I don't remember now. This the big stencil. Um, but if I wanted words, I could find it on another stencil to use. It doesn't have to be the one that comes with it. It's just so cute. I hope this one works out. We're going to find out, though. All right. I've always been <laughs> I've always actually been um, one to gravitate towards cows and uh, the farm on the farm because I used to work on a dairy farm for years and years so um, it uh, they're just cute cows are just cute so yeah. Let's see if I can get this already looks better than the other one seems to be going on a lot drier so I know don't go up there in that barn <laughs> all right let's see how this works see if this works cross your fingers let's see if I can get this tape up so much better Oh, isn't it cute? It does turn out so cute. Let's see here. So happy with this. I did do a um, research on how long you should heat set this. You should heat set it for about two to three minutes if you're using your iron. If you're using your Cricut, it said at 300 degrees for 30 seconds. So I would actually try it. I think 30 seconds at 300 degrees might actually burn your towel. So that's what I plan on doing is testing the temperature of it, maybe on this one corner or even on this one that I screwed up. Because I could, pro I might be able to take this, this cow here and actually cut him out and make like a little hand towel or something with it but that will be cute all right i hope you enjoyed this if you have any questions or comments just leave them in the comment section below if you like the video maybe you can um actually um share it and um please subscribe to my channel hopefully i'll be putting on some more videos i actually make a lot of christmas ornaments and decorative balls out of quilting fabric that have been selling on my website for $18. They are so cute and I can actually show you how to make them. I don't know if um, if it's profitable to make them and sell them for anything less than $18 but I will show you how to do them. Um, I like sharing my crafts and my skills so we'll see. Again thanks a lot and hope you guys enjoyed this. This cow is super cute and I will try to do some more and I'll put on my on my Facebook page the actual um, other animals off the stencil set so you can see what they look like. Alright, have a great day. Bye-bye.